Hi, this is Ronnie from songwritingwizard.com giving you some quick, easy, great tips for improving your creativity as a songwriter and improving your ability as a songwriter. Uh, I've got my guitar here, but I don't know if I'll use it in this video. But um, I guess what I want to talk to is the things that slow people down from writing more songs from getting better. And I was in a conversation with a guy yesterday and he he plays music but he doesn't really write songs and he said that the thing about becoming a songwriter is you have to continue to write songs even though the songs that you're writing when you first start out are not very good and you don't really think they're any good, you don't really like them um, and you have to just keep on going and keep on practicing and and that is that was definitely the case for me and a test that I use that you might want to use is I would write a song and I would at the time I was writing it I'd be really excited about it and think this is really a cool song, really nice but the next day I would often look back on it and go this is terrible, you know so that's the test, it's the next day and I must have written many many songs before I got one that the next day I thought actually this is quite good, you know actually I <laughs> want to keep going with this and and finish it and uh, I know that finishing a song is a real art and I know that George Harrison said that the only lesson he learned from John Lennon was when you start writing the song finish it straight away finish it in one sitting and that is probably a great tip because a lot of the times if I don't finish a song straight away I end up just leaving it for months and months and eventually finish it and it, it's kind of a more natural process I guess but it is important to just learn how to how to finish a song, get it finished and not try and stall over it and trying to make it perfect in your own mind. Just think about it that it's probably perfect to someone out there, you know, it might not be perfect to you but for someone else it probably will be. And that's what you're really doing when you're writing songs, you want them for other people to enjoy and and be able to get something out of and sing along to. So I always try and keep that in mind when I'm writing a song. You know, I want people around a campfire to be able to sing it. I want people uh, at a festival or something in a big crowd to be able to sing it. I want people that don't even know the song that well to be able to sing along. So there's various ways and techniques of of helping making songs more easy to sing and stuff. but. Uh, getting the song finished and the process that I would use, the process I think when you actually want to write a song is to start the song with what you would call your hook or your chorus. I don't really think it's worth, unless you're pretty good at what you're doing, I don't think it's worth starting a song unless you've got a hook because you've not really got anything to build it around. So you want to try and be very aware of what's going on in your musical brain and what you're picking up around you and the kind of music that's playing through your head on a daily basis and 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 you know something might pop into your mind and you think that's I don't know what that is that's uh, that's original you know and it may just keep on going around your mind so that's like if it's keep if it keeps coming back to you you know that's a hook you know so then you can go right this is something I can work around. Once you've got your hook, you want to kind of play it over and over, and then you're trying to find what is the complementary chords or verse or feeling that would lead up to that hook. Because the hook's not going to be uh, the verse. Generally, the hook would be the chorus. So you're wanting to find that complementary verse feeling. So maybe it was a really happy sounding chorus, maybe you want a more tense sounding or uh, sad sounding verse to give that contrast or maybe you want to even use the same exact same chords but a different melody. Uh, there's all sorts of ways of doing things there. Um, but yeah you want to find that verse. Now the question then is do you want it to be just a verse straight into the chorus or do you want it to be a verse and then a bridge part like a kind of um, 
like a kind of third part that's just the pre-chorus or bridge sometimes it's called uh, and that can be very effective as well but it will make your songs obviously a bit longer so it depends how long you want to make it um, and then once you've got those things together really it's just a matter of structuring it so you've got your verse, your chorus, you repeat that you maybe want another complementary part you really need that for the balance of a song for a pop song anyway you need something like it doesn't need to be um, you know very complicated or anything but you want another third section at least uh, that gives it balance because there's a thing called like the golden median or the golden ratio and you'll see this come up in nature a lot for things to be beautiful and structured then they follow this golden median and that's the same with songs there's a there's a kind of structure hits a certain point which is like the climax or the it's, it's the turning point of the song which is usually like a middle eight kind of section and then it starts to go home you know the, the chorus starts to repeat or whatever goes back to the chorus repeats and then ends or fades out um, so you want to you want you want to try and mimic that natural structure of nature <laughs> really verse chorus verse chorus middle eight and then either chorus chorus end or verse chorus end depending on, on how it feels but I'll probably go into this in more depth in other videos um, you know this is the funny thing as well is that you could write the simplest sounding song but actually it's a very complex process rhythmically harmonically, melodically, but all people hear is like your your lyrics or something or like I love you, you love me, something sitting under the apple tree or whatever and they think oh that's a really simple kind of childlike song and it's obviously not if you if you listen to the Beatles first couple of albums they've got a lot, a lot of songs that are like that but these they're incredible songs because you can hear someone play it years later and you, you're singing along the words automatically like <laughs> it's, it's completely ingrained in your brain those songs um, everything about the flow of them the feel of them just works so well uh, so they're very actually complex these are complex I mean it's all created by like the subconscious mind really so that's something to take into account but it's um, yeah it's incredible stuff, but yeah, people will think that you you kind of if you're writing a pop song, they think that that's like a simple thing, whereas writing a jazzy thing is not. And I think it's the opposite. I think that's the reason writing pop music is and, and writing hooks is like diving much deeper. I feel into the collective sort of consciousness of humanity or something because you're trying to write a song that appeals to a broad range of of people and if you can not just find a catchy song but a catchy song that actually has emotion and depth to it then that's the most powerful thing it's almost the most powerful form of art and so when when people kind of look down on that but look up to like modern classical music or modern jazz music or whatever uh, I think they don't realise that the pop songwriters, you know, your Paul McCartney's or Elton John or whoever it is they can write jazz and classical music if they like or stuff that sounds like it but the classical music and the jazz people cannot write pop music and that's the reason they don't write pop music <laughs> because why would you not want to write music that inspires and uh, you know turns loads of people on basically uh, just jamming a little bit here So your mind should just be turned on straight away when you're playing music and doing stuff like that and you're wanting to write and wanting to create something and that's that's where where I'm at and um, it's it's a great skill, it's something you can always it's creation, you know, and you can always create music wherever you are in the world. Um, unfortunately as you get better and better in this, there's less and less people that you can connect with because <laughs> there's not many people that 
take the time, put in the hours, put in the work, the sacrifice to get to these levels of creativity in music. And um, a lot of musicians instead want to spend their time taking drugs, drinking, all this stuff. But I've always tried to follow a healthy lifestyle. I believe that's better for my creativity and avoiding the drugs and stuff like that. So yeah, I might do a video on that actually. So. Um, if you want to hear more of my stuff on healthy living, you can go to my YouTube channel, FruityRonster.com, about the fruitarian kind of diet I follow and stuff. But I hope you got something out of this video. Please like, share and subscribe to this video. If you like it, share it with other people. And uh, discuss it with people. Put a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about what I was saying. Do you think it's... Did it help you out? Is it, is it clear? Do you have any questions? Uh, please ask me questions and I'll, I'll answer them. Visit my website songwritingwizard.com and subscribe for future updates and see you soon. Bye.